Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I want to talk about the future of Battlefield 2042. Very soon, in fact later this month, things will change forever when patch 3.2 brings with it the highly anticipated class system, and based on the reaction of a good portion of the player base, a lot of these changes might not tickle everyone's fancy, but they will at the very least fundamentally change how you play Battlefield 2042. Just like today's sponsor. Opera GX is the world's first gaming browser. It's packed with tons of awesome features like GX Control that allow you to restrict how much RAM, CPU or even bandwidth it uses so you can save it for what's important. Here you can really see the difference that GX Control makes. There's also loads of really cool integrated features. You've got Twitch baked right into the sidebar so you can check who's streaming. You've got all the social media you could ever need. So I've got Discord here and my Twitter complete with notifications. I've got Spotify to play my music. And of course, if you want to add TikTok or Facebook or anything else, you can do that too. Then there's GX Corner. I absolutely love this idea. It shows you the upcoming release dates for new games. You can easily find the best deals because it lists all the digital game stores in one place and you can even find free games and gaming news here as well. If you don't like getting flashbanged in the face every time you open a new tab, you can use the Force Dark Pages option that will force a dark theme on any website that doesn't natively support one. You can pick different background themes to suit your preference. You can drag any video player like YouTube or Netflix out of the browser altogether and overlay it on top of your game. Great for single monitor users. And then there are little subtle additions that I quite like, such as the keyboard typing noise, or you can even enable nice relaxing background music. You can also download GX Mobile that can be connected to the desktop version, and importing all your bookmarks from any other browser is incredibly fast and easy. So if that sounds like a sweet deal and you're interested in checking it out, go ahead and hit that link up below to try Opera GX for free. So ever since Battlefield 2042 released, one of the main critiques was the lack of a class system, class identity, synergy, and meaningful team play. Fast forward to season three and DICE are finally about to deliver their long awaited class system. However, this system is going to turn the game upside down in a number of ways. And while some people have been clamoring for such a system, it's obvious that a lot of people are used to Battlefield 2042 the way it is now and aren't likely to welcome such a system at all. So as I'm sure most of you already know, the current specialists will be split up into the four classes, each of them retaining their unique specialist abilities and the global gadgets like the M5 launcher or the medkit will be class restricted. Furthermore, each class will receive a new gadget that will always be available to any specialist within that class. So you can think of this essentially as a third gadget. Weapons will not be restricted, of course, but each class will receive a proficiency for a specific type of weapon, giving them an advantage over other classes with those weapons. For those of you interested in exactly what gadgets are available to what class and all of that stuff, I'll link you a couple of videos up in the corner where I cover all of that. So let's take a look at each class here and see how this will affect your favorite specialist combinations. Beginning with the Assault class, we have McKay, Sundance, Dozer, and Zane. The Assault class is looking to be one of the best in the game, as usual. The class gadget is the Med Pen, which is already probably the top picked gadget for aggressive Assault players as it is. And since this is their class gadget that every Assault Specialist receives, that means that if you're playing, let's say Sundance, you will have their grenades, a Med Pen, and then you can pick one of the assault specific gadgets as well and they get some really cool stuff so they get the smoke launcher armor plate c5 or claymores obviously mckay and sundance with the c5 are really effective since they're so good at flanking armor plates with the med pen on any assault specialist that's currently two of the best gadgets in the entire game that's just going to be really strong unless they nerf them Zane is a pretty strong pick too, although admittedly, Dozer is a bit crap. Now, if Temporial's latest findings on class proficiencies are correct, the Assault class will receive three extra magazines for Assault Rifles as theirs. So if you're a player who currently mains McKay or Sundance, you're honestly probably gonna love this class rework. 
you can still heal with the med pen, you won't even need an ammo box with those extra mags, and you can take armor as well. It's basically the selfish one-man army class. However, I don't think this class really accomplishes what DICE have set out to do with this system. The thing that's missing from the Assault class here is any synergy or team play abilities. In Battlefield 4, the Assault class had the medkits and defibs, and since a lot of players always play Assault, there were plenty of medkits to go around. In Battlefield 1, the Assault class took on the anti-vehicle role. Now, the way things are shaping up in Battlefield 2042, though, the Assault class doesn't have a single bit of kit that really helps out your teammates, unless you count the smoke launcher. Moving on to the support, we have Falk, Angel, and Irish, who is of course currently an engineer, but will be switching roles with Crawford to become a support. Now, if you're a support player, I don't think this role will really change too much. The class gadget here is simply defibs, which is already built into these specialists anyway. Then for class gadgets, you've got ammo box, med box, smoke launcher, and claymore. So one of the major changes here, of course, is absolutely no anti-vehicle stuff at all. No C5, no mines, or anything like that. So you will be more susceptible to vehicles. Also, no armor either, since that's only for the assault class. So overall, you will be a bit weaker. But other than that, you can still make a lot of your favorite combinations. Falk with an ammo box, Angel with a medic box. On the flip side though, the support class will be receiving a rather nice weapon proficiency with SMGs that gives them a faster draw time. Now, a lot of people might not like this and they prefer to see the support class with the LMGs, but this should ensure that they're always on the front lines, resupplying ammo and health and reviving. I also think that Irish could end up actually being a really strong pick. Imagine playing Breakthrough Defense, throwing down his APS gadget that eats literally any explosive you throw at it, putting down medkits and barriers, and then also being able to revive teammates. He's gonna be an absolute tank. Now, engineers, we've got Liz, Boris, and Crawford. They will always have a repair tool as their class gadget, which is really awesome. I think them being the only class with launchers is mostly fine. That means that, you know, if you're playing support or assault, you will have to drop those healing abilities that those classes have to be able to grab an anti-vehicle launcher. Although I do worry that assault and support may be so good that we perhaps end up with too few engineers on the battlefield. But I'm sure DICE will then buff the launchers accordingly. Now this, I think, is in a bit of an odd spot. Since she has her TV missile, that means she actually can't equip three out of the five possible engineer gadgets. So she can't take the M5 launcher, she can't take the AA missile, or the Javelin, which will be coming in from Portal as part of the class update. So she can only choose between the EOD bot or the anti-tank mine. Not much of a choice there really, is it? But Liz with mines and a repair tool is no doubt a specialist I will play a lot. That sounds pretty powerful. However, what that now means is that if you want to equip the M5 launcher or the AA missile or the Javelin, you are now limited to taking either Boris or Crawford, arguably two of the worst specialists in the game. It's also somewhat strange having two specialists supposedly specialized in dealing with vehicles having anti-infantry sentry guns and miniguns as their gadgets. Like, how does that play into the vehicle role at all? This really feels like one of those, we didn't have anywhere else to put them, so we just stuck them in the engineer class. So lastly, here for recon, we've got the misfits, Casper, Rao, and Pike. Where do we begin with the recon class? Well, let's start with the good stuff. Everyone gets an insertion beacon as standard, and that is super powerful. A lot of the time I like to run the insertion beacon, but I feel like I you know, don't really want to give up a gadget slot in its place, but having it as an extra piece of class gear is extremely handy. Gadget-wise here, you get the Soflam, C5, and Tracer Dart Gun to help with vehicles, and then you've got the Tugs, Proximity Sensor, and Claymore's 
for anti-infantry. So overall recon here is pretty much how it's always been. They can help with vehicles, they can help with infantry. They're sort of a jack of all trades, master of none. However, this role really clashes with some of these specific specialist abilities. I think the biggest one is Rao being able to hack vehicles, but not fire an AA missile. So as a Rao player, you will now have to hack a vehicle and rely upon your team's engineers to capitalize on this moment of weakness. If they don't, you've probably just wasted your time. DICE have mentioned that they're going to implement some visibility improvements to better convey when an enemy vehicle has been hacked as a kind of a cue, if you like, for all engineers to fire away. But overall, this will be a big upset for a lot of Rao mains and many think he would be better suited as an engineer rather than a recon. In addition to that, the recon weapon proficiency is for the sniper rifles, which is probably somewhat useless to Rao mains who like to actually get in range of a vehicle to be able to hack it. And then of course we've got Pike. Now I've always thought of Pike as a sneaky close range specialist, the kind of specialist you slap an SMG on with a silencer, you know, sneaking around with knives. That's kind of the feeling I get from Pike. And indeed her EMG scanner gadget has been nerfed so heavily that you have to be very close to enemies indeed to see them at all, which pretty much rules out using a sniper rifle. So therefore the recon proficiency is all but useless to her as well. Now I think it's fine having some recon specialists that aren't geared up to be snipers. Recon doesn't necessarily have to be sniping halfway across the map, but at the same time, it can't feel good not making use of that proficiency at all. I would really like to see DICE give the recons maybe another proficiency with utility weapons as well, like the faster reload time that they previously had for, I believe it was the engineer class. So, you know, if you want to take Pike with a shotgun, for example, you've got that option there. Overall, I think it's safe to say that whilst I do applaud DICE, of course, for implementing this class system and making an earnest effort to better team play and that which makes Battlefield Battlefield, I think we'd all be kidding ourselves if we believe for a second that these changes will be met with open arms from the whole player base. This may not necessarily bring back the players who wanted such a system in the first place. Closing the stable door after the horse has bolted comes to mind. That being said, I'm sure DICE are well aware of all these issues. Like I said, you know, things can be balanced, specialist abilities can be changed, and I think there are definitely specialists in the game that need some work. Dozer, Boris, Crawford, maybe Casper. None of these specialists, in my opinion, are exactly top tier and could probably do with a bit of love. We may yet hear some surprises from DICE when they actually drop the 3.2 patch notes later on this month, so stay tuned here for that. And then, of course, the big question on everybody's mind is, will this actually increase team play? That's the whole point of this system, right? Yet Battlefield 2042's squad management system is extremely bare bones. And until we're able to preview squads and the players within, switch into squads of our liking, and most importantly, create and manage our own squads, I think in terms of team play, a class system is only half the battle. Now, if you didn't watch Sunday's video on a revamped squad management system and platoons for Battlefield 2042, feel free to check that out if you're interested. We're talking about all of the areas where things are lacking in 2042 and what can be done about it possibly in the future. Thank you guys for spending your precious time with me today. Leave me all your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next one.